guys, today is super egg exciting. We have a ton of eggs to pull, starting with this one right Which here. Which is actually really cool because it's a first time male. I'm really excited about This is actually a pastel ghost ball python. Really beautiful animal, don't bite me. I'm gonna try to get her off her eggs really quick, but it was a first time male. There are a couple slugs in here. Let's go ahead and get these eggs out of here if we can. And we'll get these in here. Set these up. We did have two little sluggers here, but the reason I was excited was that this is a pastel ghost that is carrying the clown gene and it was bred to a male ghost clown. This is the first time that we bred this ghost clown. So this is the first clutch of any fertile egg. Couple slugs, but mainly fertile clutches. So that's pretty exciting to have a first time male, like a double recessive ghost clown ball pipe that has produced. So we've got two, four, six, seven good eggs, two little sluggers. I couldn't be more excited. You guys know that I'm always like focused on the reptarium and the expansion and all this stuff. But BHB has to keep running, right? So it's very important to produce clutches that are successful over here. So we can actually keep things rolling here over at BHB. I know that this video is about the money behind this because this clutch is interesting clutch, right? Because it's recessive. Meaning that this clutch, if I produce ghost clowns, yes. that could be worth, you know, $1,000, $1,500. If I produce a bunch of ghost clowns, it's worth a lot, right? Now, everything is going to be ghost because it's pastel ghost to ghost clown. That's a recessive mutation ghost. So everything's going to be ghost. There's going to be pastel ghost. There's going to be pastel ghost clowns. There's going to be ghost clowns. So, you know, a clutch like this could be, say, $10,000. Or it could be as low as uh, $4,000, depending on how the odds hit. The point is, yes, it's money. And we have to focus on it because BHB is a business. we got to pay the bills. But the fact is, is that I don't really think about it money when I'm pulling clutch. I typically just think about like how cool it is going to see a pastel ghost clown hatch out of a clutch. You know, we still have a bunch of eggs to go. This is another big one here, guys. This is actually an albino cine that's bred to a cine sunset. Look at how beautiful this girl is. Again, a couple little sluggers. Not exactly looking forward to this one. But at the same time, still plenty of good eggs. So I'm not going to complain too much about Looks that. Looks like we have five good eggs from this clutch right here. Again, albino cine to cine sunset, meaning we could produce super cines that are had for sunset. We produced a couple of them last year. Now that's a snake that's probably, I don't know, a $5,000 snake. Now you have to hit the odds. You're probably looking One at out of six that would actually be a super cine that is had for sunset. Everything's going to be had for sunset. Everything is going to be had for albino. They're all going to be double head albino sunsets, but then there's going to be cines that kind of mix in too. And then again, you're talking about a super cine, not only had sunset, but double head albino sunset. That egg could literally, if that hatches out, you know, that could be $7,500 snake or something like that. So this clutch could be really, really good. Again, I wish that we wouldn't have had a couple sluggers in there, but at the same time, I'm not complaining because I'm super excited about it. For me, I'm just excited about that. As a matter of fact, last year when we produced that snake, I could have probably sold it for 10 grand at the time. I want to see a super cine albino sunset. Yo, that's a dream of mine, you know, because I think that's going to be a really spectacular snake. As a business person, you have to think money, but the truth is, as a passionate reptile keeper, I'm hardly ever thinking money. I'm just thinking about cool snakes. <laughs> Hi, Condor. Are you excited to go to Mexico? Yes. Good, because we're going to clean anaconda poop first. But, um, I just got to... Did you break the plant? No, 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 no. She did. I think you did. Wait, you saw it happen yesterday. You broke the plant, didn't you? No, no, no. She did it. It wasn't me. I got good news and bad news. Good news is, knock on wood, I think we fixed all the peppers. Bad news is, she broke the plant. We'll take that good news over <laughs> the street. Plant. Yeah! Not getting fired. Not so soon. You might get eaten still. Let's clean the anaconda. Can you stay here and make sure she doesn't get eaten? Have you guys ever heard of the term, don't count your eggs before they hatch? The reason I'm saying that is that, you know, you can sit here and get a clutch of eggs and think like, oh, that's a $10,000 clutch of eggs. But until they hatch, they're really not worth anything because you don't know if you're going to have babies. Not to mention, depending on the odds, that $10,000 clutch, again, could be worth $10,000, could be worth $12,000, could be worth three hundred. dollars You know, you never know what's going to happen. This, whoa, got a little bit of a bite there. This is actually an end chin stripe and a beautiful clutch of eggs here. Holy, that no slugs in this one here. And she's actually bred to an Enchi Cine pumpkin. The pumpkin gene, of course, is the new gene that we're working with that is really beautiful, really orange, and really incredible. So this should be really good because the Super Enchi stuff could be coming. That Super Enchi pumpkin could be pretty cool. Now, I haven't sold any pumpkin stuff yet. I don't know what they would sell for, to be honest with you. I mean, a new gene like that, that's similar to the OD and the man. But I would say, you know, at least $1,500 to $2,000 for a pumpkin. Not to mention cine pumpkins and enchies and super enchies. I mean, again, you know, maybe a super enchie cine pumpkin pinstripe. You know, that might be a $2,500, $3,500 So when you look at a clutch like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 eggs. Hide our best clutch of the year. 13 twice now we've hit 13. That's incredible. Think about the money there. It I could mean, be a really lucrative clutch of eggs. Eggs. And again, I've got to always think about, you know, keeping those bills being paid here at BHB. I mean, it's pretty messed up that because I'm going on vacation, Mike is making me scoop out poo, but Did I really expect anything different from him. I'm trying to get the big poop chunks out first because they won't be sucked up in the vacuum. And then I think the rest will just be vacuum work. So, you know, I don't have to get all over me, hopefully. Mike, 
Where is Mike? Mike, what are you doing? Are you sitting down? Mike, I'm cleaning. Go, go. This is what I deal with every day. So, yes and no. And again, ratios mean everything, right? This is the perfect example. This is just a het for pi, but it's bred to an albino pied, right? So everything is going to be double het for albino pied because both albino and pied are recessive. But you don't know how many of them are going to be actual pieds. We can produce pieds het for albino from On this. On average, you would think about 50% of this clutch would actually be pied. Yes. Mendelian genetics, right? I have a clutch which is beautiful, by the way. No slugs in here. Nice, beautiful, big eggs. She's a big girl, too, so she was going to definitely lay a nice clutch egg. Take a look at that. Mama took a little pop at me. We'll get her all cleaned up, get her happy. The eggs don't quite fit in here. I'm gonna to have to try to somehow slowly try to peel these eggs off so that they'll actually fit. When you have a clutch like this, and theoretically 50% of them should be pied that are het for albino. And I don't know, a pied het for albino is probably you know, 350 bucks, something on that line. You know, if it's a pied, that's that. But if it's just a double het for albino pied, especially if it's a male double het for albino pied, honestly, it might be a $75 snake, you know? So when you start thinking about, oh, I'm gonna breed snakes and I'm gonna produce tons of stuff and I'm gonna make tons of money and look at Brian's pool and thousand dollar clutch you know, it doesn't always work that way to be honest with you what happens is that your odds could be a ratio sometimes males are worth way more sometimes females depending on the mutation and then you got to remember not every single female is going to lay eggs right this costs money to produce this clutch of eggs which is two four six eight ten eleven eggs. we're feeding the female we're paying people we've got electricity we've got square footage we've got all these other costs and then you start to enter in the fact that maybe 20 percent of your females don't produce you still have the same cost on the 20 percent that don't produce is the 80 percent that produce you have to cover that. The fact is, it really whittles down quicker than you think. And that's why so many people aren't successful breeding snakes. A lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I want to get into breeding snakes. And after two, three, four seasons, they realize that it's not as profitable as they think, or maybe their ratios, or maybe their odds, or maybe they just have a bad year. Well, that's just all part of it, right? We've kind of dialed in how to breed snakes, where we get like a 90% production from our ball pipe. That helps us be profitable. And then the odds just are what they are. Sometimes you've seen me cut eggs. Sometimes we crush it. Sometimes we fail big time. trash can. Lori's happy, I'm happy. Oh, um, so you're finally deciding to help me work today? I know I'm going on vacation, Mike, but that doesn't mean you can cut, you can doesn't mean you don't. You're starting to sound like me. I know, it's cause. I did it. Nope. Really hard. It's really hard to. It's really hard to think. What are you doing? Lot. You're just standing here. I'm gonna unplug the pump, so when it gets too low, it's not gonna burn the pump out. We gotta probably do a full water change, because it's pretty grody. This is actually a relatively common female. It's just a pastel, it's a beautiful female. She's bred to a pastel vanilla bamboo spider, which makes the fact that you could get some pretty cool offspring, even from producing from a pastel. So a lot of times, I think people make the mistake of like only buying high-end females and males. Now, don't get me wrong, if you only want animals in your collection, it's better to buy high-end females and males, but if it doesn't matter, sometimes you could take a normal or a pastel if you don't have a budget, you breed it to a little bit nicer male that isn't that expensive and you could produce some really cool stuff. A bumblebee vanilla bamboo is a really cool ammo, looks really cool. And producing to a pastel, we can now produce super pastel vanilla bamboo spider. Killer bee vanilla bamboo is basically is what it is. We only got two, four, five eggs, so we'll see how the odds go. But you don't always think that you have to have like the super high-end female bred to the super high-end male in order to do really be successful. Because sometimes you can go the other way and slowly, you know, refine your collection as you go. As you produce this cool animal, maybe you get rid of that female and replace it with a female that's a little higher and you can grow. You don't have to start with a ton of money to eventually get to the point where you're producing really high-end animals. I have a hairball stuck. Can you hand me the strainer over there and the garbage? You want to hand me the silk first? I got a coupon. Open that. You know, there's every reason why I love anacondas. Look at that thing. It's all just mushed up against the glass. Huh? <laughs> Scrape it like paint? Ooh. Mr. Alligator fell. Eggs, eggs, eggs. I tell you what, I love days like this. And you gotta remember, you gotta work all year to get to this point, right? I think that's the biggest thing about breeding snakes is that it's not like now, you know, the glory is like hatching snakes or producing eggs. The fact is it's the meldrums of cleaning the cage, feeding the cage, giving fresh water, all that stuff all year long to get to this point. This is a chocolate female that's bred to a banana super chocolate. So everything should be chocolate. We should get some super chocolates in here. And then of course about half of them will be bananas as well. They're just really pretty. I love bananas and I love chocolate. So everything
everything with banana, I always say I like the dark stuff, whether it's cinnamon, black pastel, chocolate, blackhead, that type of stuff. We've got two, four, six eggs, no slots. All right, Mike, that's how it's done. Boom. Oh, Boom. It's so hot. I know. I feel like a sweaty hot mess. You ready to, go, to get out of here? Wow, look at those toenails. No, don't. That might not be a bad thing. I could use a couple bucks for Mexico. Believe it or not, I sometimes do breed normal ball pythons just to have a handful of them left, but I've had them for so long and they're just kind of sentimental to me. This girl, I tell you what, I can tell you, she probably had one ovary that actually fired. Have two ovaries and two oviducts, right? And the fact that she only had three eggs and no slugs tells me that that's about a half a clutch. I mean, she should have definitely had six eggs, maybe even more. Sometimes a female just has an ovary that doesn't go or maybe she has damage or whatever the case is. This is only three eggs, which is not exactly ideal from a normal ball python. It's bred to a lemon blast and she extreme gene. So it's a cool male, but it's not that big of a deal. This one's definitely not going to make me a lot of money. As a matter of fact, this clutch probably may not even pay for the care of that female for the years. And that happens. And again, I don't really care that much. I love that female. I've had her for 15 years or so. So it's hard for me to get rid of her, right? Because she's sentimental. And the last clutch of the day is actually a dinker project that I've been working on for a little bit. And I bred it actually to a pastapi orange dream. So we've got a pastel mojave, an orange dream, and then a dinker project here. The eggs are kind of all over the place. So I have to be a little bit careful how I'm going to take these out because they're not stuck together. But it looks like a really beautiful clutch of eggs. So I'm going to go ahead and get these over here in the box. And we'll count them up and see what's going on. We got two, four, six, eight eggs. I mean, how absolutely incredible is that? What a day, right? I mean, gosh, we've had so many clutches. Like I had mentioned, you know, maybe the clutches that I collected today, 50, 60, maybe even $70,000 if my odds go right and the market is good and all stuff like that. Or on the flip side, it could be maybe a twenty dollars or $25,000 clutch day. Still a great amount of eggs, no matter what the value is, but you got to remember, that's not money that we made just today. That's money that had to be made over 365 days, minus all the expenses that go into it, including marketing and shipping and everything else that goes into it. You got to take that into account too. So all in all, I'm not complaining. Beautiful day for me. It was a wonderful day just because I love producing eggs. And I love to know that 57 days from now, we're going to be cutting all these clutches and seeing these amazing babies hatch no matter what the cost is. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.